The stress of my modern office has caused me to go into a depression. Depression? Isn't that just a fancy word for feeling bummed out? Dwight, you ignorant slut! Hey everybody, how's it going? Punch Easy here coming at you real quick with a long-awaited episode, uh, episode four of Posing Ain't Easy. I know it's been a super long time since I've made an episode. Long story short, life happens. I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart, 100%. I'm sorry. The good news is I have a whole bunch of backlog footage. I'm talking like three years of back footage. So pumping out these episodes should be super easy. Um, unlike posing, which ain't easy. A little bit of a little, little bit, little bit of a pun there with the with the show name. Stupid. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I got a whole bunch of footage, uh, so hopefully things go smoothly from here. Today's episode is going to have a little bit of everything. Uh, finally, I'm going to be talking about my figure accessory organization method. I know I've been teasing it every episode since the beginning of the show, but finally I am talking about it first up front and center, smack dab in the middle. It's definitely going to be the very first thing that I go ahead and talk about because I know a lot of you guys have been waiting to hear about it, so 100% that is being talked about today. Uh, I got a whole bunch of shots that I want to go ahead and go through, as well as some, you know, additional, you know, tips and tricks and stuff like that. Also, real quick, I'm going to be talking about my time at AWA, which is a really awesome con here on the East Coast. Uh, I go all the time. I go every year, but last year was my first time going through ACBA and through my YouTube channel, so I'm really excited to go ahead and share a whole bunch of awesome clips uh, with that. I might have a really cool true run and, like, haul type of thing going on. There's just a lot of content going on in today's episode. Whatever the case may be, either way you cut it, any way you slice it, I got a whole bunch of really cool content coming at you guys in today's episode of Posing Ain't Easy. Go ahead and roll that beautiful bean footage, baby. Woo! That's so stupid. <laughs> Yo, what's up, girls and boys? It's time to make some noise. Cause I'm back and I'm on this track now. Let's talk about some classic toys. You can bet I pose them all. Legends of Dragon Balls, Batman and Kaiju, and Common Riders. I collect them all. Gotta make sure you pose this tight, though. Make sure your light is right, though. Keep it contained because you train for this your entire life, bro. So please don't adjust your TV. This is your host, Punch Easy. Sit back and relax and learn this fact. Posing ain't easy. <laughs> Everybody, what's good? Just want to go ahead and start the episode off right. Something I've been promising to talk about every single episode since the beginning of the show. And that is my organization method for all my figure accessories. So right off the bat, to get into questions out of the way, these boxes are called really useful boxes. That's literally what they're called. That is their branding name. They're called really useful boxes. Then they are literally really <laughs> They're really useful. So I know you can get these individually. Uh, I see a lot of people in the diorama community actually getting these individually so they can use them as crates and boxes. Uh, but the way I buy them is in these little packs. They all come in a pack of 16 and it's 16 of these little dudes right here and they come in like a case, like a housing that you can slide them in and out of like this. And um, that's really great. So I remember when I first started this organization method, I had had about three of those little packs and that was about, I don't know, like what, 48? 48 of them? Three times 12 is 48. Does that sound right? Why did I even say 12? It's 16. Oh my god. But I remember even back then, I was like, yo, this is a lot. I don't really know if I'm ever gonna use all this stuff. Uh, and then, yeah, look at me now. Uh, making paper. Uh, not really. <laughs> Depressing. Obviously, I've gotten a few more. Uh, I have, I think, 12 of these now. I have 12 of the packs of 16, and that's 198? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever the number is, it's over 190 individual little storage containers, and these have literally changed my life when it comes to figures. Obviously, not my whole life. That would be some sort of fucking breakthrough, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, these definitely make things 
super, super easy. Now, what I've done here is I've bought, obviously, a lot of them, and I've stacked them on top of each other, and usually they're kind of like really wobbly and stuff when they're stacked up on top of each other, but I went ahead and secured each of them together with some uh, office paper clips. I think the smallest size you can get, uh, you just clamp them on there, and they, they sit flush, and, and they're sturdy. They're super sturdy, too. So the biggest question I get is when I have this many, like, how do you keep track of everything? Like, obviously there's a whole bunch. And let me tell you, when I first started this, uh, I had no labeling method or anything like that. And even with just three of these, like constantly pulling stuff in and out, in and out, in and out, got really, really tiring. And then after a while, I said enough was enough. There's gotta be some sort of labeling method. Uh, I kind of experimented with just straight up text labels, but that wasn't really working. So I skipped right over written text and went straight individual aids and let me tell you it made a world of a difference like I can only imagine if this many little cubbies had every single one of them had like words on them that would be like a mess I get like my brain is like hurting even thinking about it but putting the pictures of the accessories that that little cubby holds is like perfect like I can't believe I didn't think of it sooner like for so long I just went with them unlabeled period but having the actual picture of the figure on the cubby is like perfect. All I have to do is just like skim and then look and then there it is. Like the only exception is from far away, like it's kind of hard to tell. But when you're right up on it, like in actual real world situations, like it works flawlessly and it's, it's great. I love it. And the method of printing them out is actually super easy. Like freakishly easy. <laughs> so what I pretty much do is I kind of just wait until I have a whole bunch that I need to print out uh, because it seems silly to waste so much paper on just like one or two little labels. So I pretty much just wait, uh, and then when I finally get a big list of figures that I wanna go ahead and make labels for, uh, I basically just go on Google, and I search for the figure, and it, like, I, I feel like I don't even have to explain how to look up photos of, but I'll do it anyway, so. <laughs> I go on Google, I look up a picture of the figure, I basically just type in the figure name, and go straight to Google Images, and the first, one of the, some of the first pictures you find are the product image, and that's generally what I go for, the product image. And the orientation of most of those product shots are always gonna be portrait mode, and they fit perfectly in that little window, that little visible window of the cubbies, and they work out great. So obviously I save the image, like, I, again, I, I feel like I don't have to, whatever. So I save a bunch of those images, and when I have around like 25 to 30, then it's time to print them. Uh, and if you're on a Windows PC, the default printing program works perfectly. Like, I just highlight every single one of them, and I just click print, and then it'll take you to the program window where it shows how many you can fit on the page. And then if you just choose the smallest, like absolute smallest one, it's like the perfect size. You have to go ahead and click this little box that says fit to screen, otherwise a lot of them will be cut off in weird places. No one wants that. But you just go ahead and you print them out, and they are the perfect size. They're really great. Now, I used to go ahead and rock with scissors, and I used to just, you know, snip every single one of them out, uh, but that got a little time-consuming. But I went ahead and stepped my game up, and I went and picked up this little guy. It's like a cheat cutter or whatever. I don't know the real name for it. I picked it up forever ago for college, uh, and it's it's great. These things are, like, super cheap. They're, like, I don't know how much they cost anymore, <laughs> but they're super cheap. I know I didn't pay a lot for mine, and that really makes the process a lot easier. Like, of course, you're gonna have to go in, you know, and you know, get getting the fine lines and stuff like that with scissors, you know. So you're gonna have, you're gonna have to fuck with scissors a little bit. I'm not gonna lie to you, uh, but uh, going in and streamlining everything by using this tool makes things a lot easier. So once I have everything, you know, cut out and spread out. Uh, I basically just take some scotch tape and I just tape it on the inside of the thing. It takes you know, one or two pieces of tape and it's relatively easy. Like I said, this whole method is shockingly easy <laughs> and the end result looks great. Uh, I mean, I, I might be a little biased here, but I think it looks great. <laughs> So, like I said earlier, the product is called Really Useful Boxes. You can definitely find them online. Shipping for them might be a little bit nuts uh, because the company is based out of the UK. They, they proudly, they're proud of that, man, let me tell you. On the box, it says, bam, made in the UK. Be, be, you know what? Be proud. These are phenomenal products. <laughs> but depending where you order from, you might do a little bit better, a little bit worse on shipping. Uh, I'll let you know that they're generally between $15 to $20 online from what I've seen. eBay is the... The least expensive I've seen them been sold, I think I saw one that was like $20 shipped or something like that. Uh, sometimes things get a little outrageous, they're like $36 some other places, 
don't don't mess with that. If you're if you're paying thirty thirty dollars or something for these, save your money and go somewhere else. Let me tell you. Uh, ideally, if you are close to a, a hobby store called AC Moore, that is the best place because that is one of the only places that I've seen them been sold like in the real the real world. Um, this is I don't I don't know why I'm talking like this. <laughs> the real world. What am I talking about? But you know, out in the wild, I, I've only seen them at AC Moore. I haven't seen them at Michaels. I haven't seen them at Hobby Lo Hobby Town or whatever. Any of these other stores, I haven't seen them anywhere. I've seen them being sold individually at home at like Office Depot and stuff like that. Um, but never with like the, the actual housing and that comes with 16 and stuff like that. Not like anything that I've bought right here. But AC Moore is your best bet. And you know, they are $15 at AC Moore and that is really great because it's usually online $15 before shipping. Uh, and then AC Moore always has like really killer coupons and really killer sales. So all you really have to do is just sign up for the AC Moore like card or program or whatever. And they send you coupons like all the time and it doesn't cost any money. Um, and you know, honestly, I got most of these I've, I didn't pay full price for. I got them for like $5, $7, something like that. Um, and it's always good to go ahead and pick them up like at AC Moore. I remember for a long time. I, every time I walked into the AC Moore and I would see these in stock, I would pick up a few. Uh, and that's obviously why I'm in this situation <laughs> right now with so many of these. Uh, but uh, it's a really great investment. To wrap up everything, if you are looking to store your figure accessories, like I'm talking heads and hands and smaller accessories, I will admit it doesn't fit some of the bigger stuff like, you know, capes and like long swords and everything. But I will tell you, if, you, if you're messing with like SH Figure Arts Star Wars stuff, when you break apart the lightsaber, like it holds, it actually holds the lightsaber. So there's a lot of room in there, um, but not enough for like bigger stuff like, uh, like Piccolo and Gohan's cape don't fit in there and like swords and stuff like that, like I said earlier. Um, but if you're looking for a really great and effective and, you know, albeit a really good looking way to display your action figure uh, accessories, this is a really great way. Uh, like I said, not only is it effective, but uh, with the right time and care and printing out these little, you know, pictures and stuff, it can be presented really, really well. And once you get to, I mean, even if you start off with like one or two, they look great, but once you get to something like this, like a whole wall of it, like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's pleasing to look at. I'm not gonna go in mince words, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it's, it's, it's nice to look at. <laughs> Again, I'm a little biased. <laughs> anyway, before we move on to the next segment, if you guys have any questions specifically about this, go and let me know in the comment section below. If you guys want me to dive in a little bit deeper into this, a level beyond Inception, I don't, that doesn't, that reference doesn't make sense here. But if you guys want me to go and talk about this a little bit more in depth, I'm not really sure how much more in depth I can go. Uh, but just let me know in the comment section because I know I've been promising this for a long time talking about uh, this organization method. So if you guys want to know anything, go and let me know in the comment section. Anyway, catch you guys in the next clip. Peace. Well, it uh, never fails. It never fails. I don't know what it is, but I can turn my back for. Oh my god. It, what? What is happening? <laughs> But turn my back for one second and my whole display falls apart. Anyway, uh, this is a quick display I did with uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku here. You can see him on the floor, you know, just hanging out. Yeah, it's, um, I've had this figure forever. Don't doesn't really get a lot of love just because, you know, just of the paint scheme and stuff like that, but the sculpt is phenomenal on his. The technology on his hair is really cool. I mean, it's just ball joint stuff, but it has three joints in his hair. I think it's really tight. And, you know, it just generally doesn't get a lot of love. Same thing for this uh, Boo figure right here. This is the hybrid action uh, Boo figure. And I don't see a lot of cats in the community with it, more or less, and who, who even use it, <laughs> you know? So it's really cool to see these two figures going at it. And I just go went ahead and threw, like, you know, some Tamashi explosion effects back here with some, you know, some uh, ground impact effects with my own, like, uh, uh, like, what are you, I don't even know what to call these. Like, these are just pieces of stuff I made, pieces of dirt and rocks and rubble I made with excess of my um, dia right here. And then in the back I have this rock that I bought forever ago. It's like for an aquarium, but I bought it for specifically, you know, figure photography and stuff. And it worked out pretty well. I also went ahead and lit the back with, uh, this thing is freaking out because my shutter speed is really low. But uh, I lit the back with uh, this bulb. I've had this bulb for a really long time. 
and it's a multicolor bulb. It's really cool. You can change all the colors and stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't flicker like this in real life, obviously, just because, you know, it's just what's happening in the camera. But you can um, change the brightness and stuff like that, and it works really well. It's really cool. But yeah, just wanted to go ahead and highlight this because, I mean, I'm sure it can't happen to just me. It has to happen to everybody else. But yeah, uh, the shot was really cool. It was fun to set up. Uh, I guess that's the price I pay for doing it. You know, NSA, no strings attached. Uh, I guess the quietest whisper of a fart just ruins everything. Anyway, uh, RIP in peace, Goku. Jesus. One eternity later. Okay, so here I am back at it a week later. And yo, I got it all set up uh, again. I guess I, I just left them on the floor. In the arms of the angel. Uh, until I cooled off, you know, just let the dust settle from <laughs> all my fingers falling on the floor. No, uh, just let it, just let it, you know, just chill for about a week. I think it's been like maybe a week, like five days or something. But uh, I decided to try one more time before I uh, went ahead and tore everything down for another shot. And I'm glad I did. I like this pose a lot. I think it's really cool. I got it, you know, no strings attached. He's just like kind of wedged between the two effect pieces. You can see right there, he's not really touching the ground. Same thing with Boo over here. Uh, he's just like propped up between like the cloud plume and like the that sharp explosion going on there but yeah I'm really I'm really glad I didn't decide to just go ahead and tear everything down because I really do like this shot I enjoy it and I guess that just goes to show like if you're frustrated with a shot and you're not really planning anything in the future just you know just let it ride just um just give it a second to breathe just come back it's just come back to it like a day or so later and you know you might you might have something dope on your hands you never know but I didn't I don't know if I really got a chance to go over you know the ins and outs of this shot uh, the last time but um, I went ahead and made this dial right here. It's pretty cool. It's super old. Uh, I think I might have to make a new one just because this one is, you know, I've been using this one for like a whole year, so it might just, it might just be people just might be get tired, get tired of seeing it. <laughs> but I went and used some uh, some Tamashi effects right here, as well as some handmade stuff over here, and then this aquarium rock. You know what? Because I'm saying this again, this sounds like deja vu, that's because I did explain it, so yeah, I already explained it in the clip you literally saw not even 20 seconds ago. But yeah, that's it. Looks dope. Um, I can't wait for a recolor of this Goku. Uh, it's inevitably going to come just because they just utterly dropped the ball on this, I don't know what happened, it kind of looks like mustard in real life, but you know, through the lens it doesn't look half bad, and if you mess with, you know, some saturation and stuff like that in the camera, you can get some good, you know, you can get some good results going on with this Goku, but, yep, I just wanted to go ahead and shoot this quick little clip before I went ahead and tore this down, and yo, that's it! Hey everybody, how's it going? What's good? Uh, I just want to go ahead and take a little bit, just a moment of your time today to talk about AWA. That's right, AWA, Anime Weekend Atlanta. is probably the dopest time I have the entire year. Uh, I've been going to AWA for a super long time. The first time I went was actually way back in high school, just like 10 years ago. Longer than 10 years ago because I was like, I was in the 10th grade, so it was like 12 years ago. Holy shit, I'm fucking old. Uh, but... <laughs> But yeah, AWA is super dope. I go all the time. Uh, if you're anywhere near the Atlanta area, do yourself a favor and check it out one year. It's incredible. Um, I recently went last year and it was super fun. I went with my fiance, my friend Jack, and then my good friend Uncanny Megan. We we chilled, we split a room, we chilled the entire time at AWA. We did a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Just like every year, there's a whole bunch of dope stuff to do. Uh, there's always really cool panels. There's like a super dope concert that happens all the time with different guests every year. Um, there's also like Q&As and like meet and greets and stuff like that, cosplay contests, gaming rooms, all sorts of dope stuff. Um, but I want to go ahead and walk through uh, what I did when I went to AWA last year. So first and foremost, uh, I like to cosplay, so I went and took my uh, Zara Vegeta, and um, we basically just chilled. That's like the coolest part about AWA to me. Uh, I like just going around and chilling and just walking the floor, meeting like-minded folks, meeting old friends. Uh, one of the coolest things about uh, 
uh, annually going to a con is the first year you might not know anybody but as you keep on going and going every year you go ahead and make some really cool friendships and uh, that's exactly what I did so I met up with a whole bunch of my really cool cosplay friends while we were there uh, continued to walk around I filmed a whole bunch of stuff with Uncanny Megan met up with a couple of great uh, cosplay photographers and videographers uh, really great people like Beat Down Boogie and then Real T Dragon everybody everybody all the cool dope people around uh, it's really cool seeing them out every single year um, really cool getting a chance to reconnect and you know doing the uh, the ever awkward hey what's up what have you been up to this year oh really I've been doing this literally 1% of what I've been doing the entire year and just going alright cool see you later <laughs> Next up, we hit up a bunch of really cool panels. Uh, you know, let me tell you, every single year, there's a really good mix of like fan-run panels and professional panels. Uh, I know One Punch was a really big thing this year, I believe, and a whole bunch of guests from the actual show were there, and they had a whole bunch of really cool panels with the One Punch guests, and a whole bunch of fan panels as well, talking about everything from basic cosplay tips over to, I don't know, the economy of the digital world. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, but uh, there's always a lot of really cool panels uh, going on all the time. Next up, periodically throughout the weekend, we would always hit up the gaming room. There's a lot of really dope stuff at the gaming room. The coolest thing about the gaming room is they always import a lot of really great, you know, candy calves and stuff like that. Just dedicated stuff like that. Always, you know, it's anime setting, so obviously there's going to be DDR. Um, but then. There's also really, really cool exclusive uh, arcades. Uh, one of my favorite arcade units they've ever had at the con was that table flipping game where you just flip a table. They didn't have it last year. Ah, hurt my heart. They didn't have it last year. Here's hoping it comes again. But that was so dope. But they had a really, they had a really cool array of like candy cabs and like some indie games were there too. Um, they were doing like some big thing on the projector, and of course there's DDR and Pump It Up and all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, always a really, really cool time with that gaming room. Of course they had like dedicated other gaming rooms for like you know tournament play, Street Fighter, you know other fighting games, Smash, Melee, all sorts of all sorts of good uh, all sorts of good stuff like that. Um, and then basically we just kind of like just dicked around the entire time. Like I said, just meeting friends, popping into panels, checking out the gaming room, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, it's just super fun. But the main reason I go every year, which is exactly why I'm including it in this episode, is because of, boy, let me tell you that dealer's room, son. Woo! That dealer's room is so, so exciting at AWA. There's a whole bunch of really dope stuff. Not only is there a huge dealer's room, but there's a whole separate hall for artist alley and stuff like that. And these kind of bleed into each other. You know, it's really cool. Um, I remember two years ago, I bought a whole bunch of cells at the dealer's room. And that was really, really exciting. But um, they, the dealer's room at these cons, like if you're, if you go to cons, period, you know the dealer's room is definitely where it's at, especially if you're in the figure community. Uh, and these guys don't, don't disappoint. Like, there have been times where um, a figure will just, just hit, and then we see it there at the dealer's room. I know um, I was really excited because I picked up uh, the new Link Figma, uh, and that that shipped like maybe maybe a week or maybe a week bef less than when the con actually started. So to see people on the show floor that actually had the the Figma Link in hand was. Uh, it was unbelievable and you see stuff like that all the time and these guys are just getting it from the retailers so they're selling it at retail price msrp you now this markup garbage that you see plaguing the internet world <laughs> i got this guy at retail price so it was really cool so by name uh because it's an anime con there's a lot of anime stuff at the dealer's room duh uh but there's also a lot of gaming stuff too there's a lot of little booths here and there sprinkled out a lot of local dudes uh but for the first time i saw this huge booth that had a whole bunch of Japanese imports from Game Boy to PlayStation to PS4 to Xbox One. It's nuts. They had a whole bunch of really cool stuff. I, whole, I saw a whole bunch of dope stuff that I've been looking for for such a long time, including Rockman Adventures for PlayStation 1. Yo. I wanted that game so bad. <laughs> but it was really cool to go ahead and see them uh, kind of branching out in terms of gaming because uh, anime and gaming generally go hand in hand, uh, especially if you have the willpower to go. <laughs> willpower, what am I saying? Especially if you're out there going to an anime con, chances are you like video games too. So it was cool to see a whole bunch of video game stuff there. Um, but uh, when it came to the anime stuff, there was so much stuff there. I already touched on like the Zelda figure and stuff like that, but there's so much Dragon Ball merch. Obviously, with the with the uprising of Dragon Ball Super again, there's a whole bunch of Dragon Ball Z stuff everywhere. Uh, one of my favorite vendors 
always there every year without a doubt he was there again uh, and he always has a whole bunch of really cool stuff uh, I actually got um, a big part of my statues uh, from him now I know I say it all the time I don't, I don't really fuck with statues uh, but uh, if I do they're generally just Dragon Ball stuff or video game collector edition stuff and uh, going to AWA actually reinvigorated my love for statues it caused me to break my I don't fuck with statues rule uh, because there are just so many cool Dragon Ball um, static figures just chilling all around the dealers room not only that but there's a whole bunch of really cool DVDs everywhere there's Blu-rays uh, there's like wall scrolls there's fucking body pillows like anything your brain can think of uh, the dealers room had it there like it was unbelievable every single year the dealers room gets even better and better wilder and wilder you know it's it's nuts man I love I love love going to the dealers room at AWA generally it's it's suffice it to say that's the biggest reason I go there so all in all AWA was super dope um, if you guys want to hear more about AWA you can catch some of the past ACBA podcasts I did I talked about AWA around October of 2016 is when I went so uh, peep the ACBA podcast around there if you want to hear some more you know uncandid thoughts I think Emia was on the same podcast and he was there too i definitely met up with emia as well super dope really cool um but yeah if you guys want to hear a little bit more about awa go ahead and let me know in the comment section below uh, as well as keep an eye out for other you know exclusive stuff coming from awa i'm going to do like a true run on acba saturdays and i'm going to do just a whole bunch of other different stuff uh talking about awa also check out uncanny megan's uh podcast i was a guest on her podcast we talked about all about awa as well and yep i'll catch you guys in the next clip all right cool so um started setting this up and i realized yo i should probably film this uh so i am making the thumbnail picture basically just a basic shot uh for this little guy right here the super saiyan 3 brawly head right here it's kind of hard to fit the whole guy in frame but it's huge uh <laughs> so i started setting up this little scene I always loved it when Brawly would just like grab people's heads and like just drag them across like you know the building and like movie 8 and stuff like that with Gohan it was just so dope to me so I just went ahead and I took the head off of this Awakening Goku put him next to some of these uh, Tamashi ground effects and I'm just gonna go ahead and build the scene around it and I took the head off of the Goku just because it's gonna be hidden by these effects anyway and then it would be easier for you know, Brawly's hand to go on that empty peg, and then I don't want to cause any paint rub, which probably won't happen, but you know, you can never be too safe between Brawly's hand and uh, the Goku head. So it's just easier to just go ahead and eliminate it all together. Uh, I'm going to try and do this thing, uh, no strings attached, and the way I'm going to do that is I have these two effects back here, and I'm just going to go ahead and try and just rest uh, Brawly's entire body um, on it. So we're going to have... Let's see, so we got Brawly's legs right here, and we're gonna try and get it resting. If it wants to, God, his freaking hair is so goddamn heavy. <laughs> I talk about this in the review extensively, that his hair is so heavy, and it's, you know, it's, ring it's ringing true right now. Um, let's see, let's, see. let's get that like that. And yo, okay, whoa, just like that, works out. All right, so it might look a little strange right now, but I'm gonna try and find a good angle, but I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and try and build around what's happening with Brawly right now. Pray for me. I'm about to open my cabinet at the bottom. 
Please don't make the figures fall. Oh God, excruciating. Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, so I got them lit. Let's go ahead and get that background going. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful. Woo! All right, so let's go ahead, take this off real quick. Uh, get a little in depth. So I went ahead and decided to put the head back on Goku. Um, I ended up getting a much better balancing point by putting his hand right on his chest. And as you saw, I didn't bother to put the Goku head back on the peg. I'm just, I, it's just kind of standing there. You know, no use trying to mess with that. Uh, I have Brawly kind of resting on those two Tomashi explosion effects right there. And I basically just built the scene around him. I went ahead and I put a whole bunch of those extra Dio pieces I had laying around. I just kind of had, I kind of went ahead and built like um, a trail of dirt and like rock flying around him. So uh, the, the picture is probably gonna end up looking like this more or less. Um, I really wanna highlight the Super Saiyan 3 hair um, but I kind of want to get a good dynamic pose at the same time, but since the majority of his hair is pretty much just flowing behind him like that, I'm just going to have to go ahead and you know, make a few sacrifices. Who knows? I might end up just doing this because this looks pretty dope right here too. Uh, who knows? But I just wanted to go ahead and uh, share with you and go ahead and film this real quick, the, um, the making of the behind the scenes. There goes my phone, super loud. <laughs> of this entire shot. It's pretty dope. Um, I dig it, man. Uh, overall, you know, if you haven't seen my video on the Brawly head yet, uh, overall, I think it's a pretty alright piece. Uh, 40 bucks is a little steep, you know, but it's a cool, you know, extra little piece that you can buy to add some more flair to your display. If you have an extra Brawly laying around and you want to, you know, give him some more pizzazz, you know, kind of hit him with a non-canonical fan fiction tier type of transformation, you can go ahead and throw in the Ultimate Super Saiyan 3 Legendary Brawly Super Saiyan Hair, whatever, Super Boogaloo, this time it's Personal Part 2 Edition, who cares? Uh, anyway, yo. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next clip. Peace! Alright everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I just want to go ahead and close it out by talking about the new Revoltech Spider-Man. Uh, I love this figure, man. <laughs> Let me go ahead and tell you. I really, really dig this figure. A lot of cats in the community don't really like it. Uh, and reasonably so, I, I get it. I mean, like, so sometimes the articulation is a little hard to work with. I'm not the biggest fan of Revoltech joints. Uh, but... You know, given time and effort and practice and stuff, I I, I learned to love them. I, I really like them. I, I just, I don't like them as much as SH Figure Arts joints. Uh, but, you know, they definitely have their time and place uh, within figure photography. Uh, I know a lot of people don't really like this figure just because his proportions are kind of weird and his, and the joints, you know, have a lot of gaps and stuff like that uh, in between some parts and stuff. And a lot of people don't like that. I generally don't mind just because of the sheer fact that these poses you can get him in. Like right now I have him in the classic, like uh, Marvel vs. Capcom or just any type of Capcom fighting uh, pose that he's always in. And yo, let me tell you, I think it's super dope. I really, really like this figure. Um, and if you get a chance to pick him up, definitely, definitely give him a shot because you can get some really cool, you know, hyper agile and hyper dynamic poses like that. And uh, I just think it's overall a really cool figure. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed the show. I know I've been away for a super long time in terms of posing it easy and stuff like that. Um, so your feedback is 100% appreciated. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, as usual, go and slap them in the comment section below. Um, your, com your comments are always valuable and always appreciated, uh, but I would really love to hear what everybody thinks about the return 
of posing ain't easy after almost two years <laughs> of absence. And again, I'm super sorry. But yeah, if there's some stuff that you guys want to see uh, in the next episode or some suggestions you have about this episode, go ahead and let me know. I'd really love to hear it. Uh, until then, uh, if you guys want to catch more of my stuff, definitely follow me on Instagram. That's where I post all my stuff in terms of social media. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me ASAP, get in touch with me on Twitter. Uh, both of the handles are the same, Ponchisi. Uh, and if you guys want to see me on a weekly basis, I'm on the ACBA podcast pretty much every single week. And if you guys are interested in figure photography and ACBA in general, and this is your first time seeing this kind of stuff with this with the show uh, definitely check out ACBA uh, it stands for articulated comic book art on Facebook's really awesome community of dudes that just really like to hone their craft in terms of tangible displays for figure photography uh, everybody there's super dope it's a really great community full of tips and tricks and uh, yo it, it helped me get to the point as to where I am right now with figure photography. Anyway, as usual, thank you guys so much for watching my video. Thank you so much for supporting my content and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Stay tuned. Don't leave. Don't leave. I, I made like a, like a, just like I made with a stupid intro. <laughs> I made an outro too. Uh, and uh, yo, tell me what you think about that. Anyway, catch you guys later in the next episode of Posing Ain't Easy. Peace. No